OK, so in this video, we're going to calculate the Taylor polynomial for five terms at the point zero for the function of e to the x. So when calculating the Taylor polynomial, it's always good to know what degree you need. And the degree is the variable n. And in this video, we're looking at n is 5 because we're looking for five terms. And the point a, which is the point we're interested in where we're trying to calculate it, is zero. So it's at the point zero. So where you see an n, we will substitute 5. Where you see an a, we will substitute 0. And then the function is e to the x. Then here, on the bottom here, I've got the standard uh, Taylor polynomial formula for any, any Taylor polynomials. Now you'll see here that we've got f of a. So that's the value of the function at 0. The first derivative at 0, 1 factorial, x minus a. So that will become x minus 0 to the power of 1. And then here we'll have the second derivative at 0 divided by 2 factorial and x minus 0 squared. And again, as you'll see, there's a pattern form in here. So we've got a 2, a 2, and a 2. Then a third derivative, you've got a 3, a 3, and a 3. The fourth derivative, you've got 4, 4, and 4, and then same for 5. So basically what that means is the first derivative, the second derivative, the third derivative, the fourth derivative, and the fifth derivative, and so on and so on. Then it's x minus a, so that's our point zero. So in all these cases in, in this video, there'll be x to the 2, x to the 3, x to the 4, x to the 5. Then on the denominator, 1 factorial, which is just 1, 2 factorial, which is 1 times 2, which is 2, 3 factorial, which is 6, 1 times 2 times 3, 4 factorial, which is 24, and then 5 factorial, which is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, which is 120. So that's our basic start, what we got here. And then we, as we go on, we do it in a couple of stages. We substitute formulas and values in at each stage. So first step, we'll calculate the derivatives. So here we go. So we differentiate the function e to the x five times. Now e to the x is an excellent uh, function to find the derivative of because no matter how many times you differentiate it, you end up with e to the x. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth derivatives are all e to the x. So that's really easy. And the function also is e to the x. So all this sign on the left hand side is all the same. And it's always good to lay out in a nice little table like this because you've got a nice, easy, clear way of distinguishing what each value is and what it is you're trying to calculate and substitute into the formula. So then we're going to calculate the derivative of each derivative, calculate the value of each derivative, sorry, at 0. Now anything to the power of 0 is always 1. So whether you have 2 to the power of 0, 22 to the power of 0, 3 million to the power of 0, or minus 300 to the power of 0, it's always 1. So e to the power of 0 is 1. The first derivative is e, because we calculate it at 0, is also 1. Second derivative, the same case. The third, the fourth, the fifth, all the same case. So calculating the Taylor polynomial for e to the x is quite a nice little uh, job to, uh, to calculate. So these are all 1. So that makes the calculations very, very easy. So now what we can do is now we can start to substitute all these values into our formula. So here's our formula. So it's t5x, Taylor polynomial to 5 degree, f of 0, which we calculated, which we got here on this top line. The first, der first derivative at 0 to the power of uh, 1. So that's all good. And then we've got the x minus 0. I've just put that in there so you know that is an x minus 0, because the left I've just left is x cubed, x cubed, x to the 4, and x to the 5. Then the one factorials I've left in because we do know we know what those numbers are anyway. And one thing we do know is that all these derivatives, fifth derivative, fourth, third, second, and first derivatives at zero are all worth one. So that's uh, going to make things nice and easy for us as well. So now we go along and substitute all this stuff in, and then we end up the five degree Taylor polynomial at of degree 5 at point 0 for e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial. 
and that's a nice little pattern form in there because you can see these fives all match up. You could have written 120 and 24 and 6 and 2 because 1 times 2 is 2 and so on. But it's also absolutely fine to write in the factorials because we all know what they are. So just see how we got from here to here. So f of 0 we knew was 1. So let's just go up to the page again. So that's 1. So that first function, uh, that first value there becomes 1. So that's why we've got the 1 here. And then the first derivative is 1, as all the derivatives are. So we've got 1 over 1 times x minus 0. Well, that is just x. So that explains why we've got this x here. The second derivative is 1. So 1 over 2 factorial times x squared. So we've just put x squared over 2 factorial. It's just a bit of a neater way to look at it. <clears throat> so that takes care of that. Same with the third derivative, 1 over 3 factorial, again x cubed over 3 factorial, fourth derivative the same, fifth derivative the same. So now we can look at a graph and see how accurate our Taylor polynomial is for e to the x. So this thick black line here, that there is our Taylor polynomial. And this dotted line is the real value of e to the x, the real graph of e to the x. We calculated it at point zero. So you can see at point one here, now sorry, at y equals one, which is where our where we are at zero, it is absolutely accurate. It only becomes to tail away at around about just after two, two and a half. And the same on the positives, just after maybe even up to two, it's the same. So we can say this is a pretty much good success. So there we go. We'd be confident in our result. So that's our Taylor polynomial. Thanks for watching.